welcome to The Knit Show. I'm Vicki Howell. Today we're gonna experiment with some multi-craftuality. And what that means is that we're going to be working with different types of textile crafts, mixing them together to make really cool projects. First up, we are gonna have my friend Brett Barra, who's all the way here from Brooklyn. She's the owner of Brooklyn Craft Company. She's gonna be making this really cool mixed media purse. Then we're gonna be headed over to Kent, Washington to go to one of my favorite craft shops called Maker's Mercantile. After that, we'll be back in the studio with Weaver, Smile, and Waves, Rachel Denbo. But first, we are going to meet today's Knit Hive. Hello, ladies, welcome. Hi. It's good to have Hi. you. Thank you. And first of all, can we talk about your shawl? Oh, yes, please. It's beautiful. Thank what, you. what pattern is that? This is uh, Wingspan, and uh, it's one skein, and it's yarn by Vice, so it, it has a long colorway. So you never had to change colors? I never did. I love that. I Isn't love when you don't have to do the extra work. That's and it's really... just what you need for the office or the church or just... Or when you go on a cruise? Or when you go on a cruise. You cruise around a lot, I hear. We do. Where do you go? We do a lot of transatlantics. And so I'm in Europe or on the East Coast. And I always look up yarn shops before I go. And... Uh, so as soon as you port, you like... As soon as I port, yeah. we head off to find out where the yarn shops are because it gets us out of the tourist areas and into where the people are. And I've, yeah. we've had so many good experiences. Have you ever been on one of the knitting uh, knitting cruises, the retreat cruises? I've been playing around with whether or not I want to do one of those. I haven't gone on one, but I have been on cruise ships where they were. There was a group from Wisconsin that was on a cruise ship that we were on. and. I um, I don't think they ever saw the ocean. <laughs> they fair were enough. Too busy, did he? Fair but, enough. Fair enough. Well, thank it you was for great being to be here. There. Thank Thanks you. for being here, Patricia. You knit. You also spin. Yes. Is that correct? Which I'm going to make you make a Sophie's choice right now. Which one do you like better? I like them both. Oh, you couldn't do it. <laughs> she couldn't do I'm it. I'm sorry. What are your well, favorite? What, you, what are you making now? A sock. These are socks. And this is some hand dyed yarn that my friend Darlene Hodge dyed for me. And uh, do you usually knit with hand dyed and hand spun yarn? Is yes, that your preference? Yes. I like it a lot. Thank you. It's very cool. Well, thank you for being here. And Susan, you, I think, frequent my local yarn store, Hill Country Weavers, a lot. Ah, right? uh, well, I have. Yeah? Yes, of yeah. course. <laughs> do you, uh, so what are you making now? I see that you're making something rainbowy. Well, actually, this is, um, I've been. I've knit so many things for myself, and there's only so many sweaters and scarves I can wear. and Especially so, here <laughs> in hot yes, Texas. Yeah. Exactly. And so I've been doing a lot of charity knitting. So this is acrylic. and Do you what, have a favorite charity that we can tell everyone about? Well, yes. This particular one is I'm, I'm knitting scarves for uh, the Special Olympics. Oh, great. And, the, you know, a lot of knitters in town are just... Um, uh, knitting up, uh, so it's uh, uh, multi-colors uh, with black. That's the requirement, so, yes. just for the, yes. oh, I love that project. Have any of you ever worked, today we're really focused on mixed media, so that means any kind of textile or needle art we're going to play around. Have you ever, I know you needlepoint, correct? Mm -hmm. Have yeah, you ever actually. mixed your needlepoint with crochet or with weaving or with sewing or anything? Do you ever, have you ever played around Let's with that? Let's see, I could show you that I, I recently made my, bag, which is uh, crocheted, and I held some yarn with um, embroidery floss. And is that a and bike tire? A, yes, it is. That's also my... <laughs> Check that right out. And the clips. <laughs> and the clips? That is some major multimedia. And, uh, I don't know if I can give a plug to um, Austin Creative Views. You absolutely can. But I uh, work there, and they're nonprofit, and have all kinds of great craft things for sale at great prices. I love it. So. Well, this is really great and so creative. Well, I'm gonna let you all hang out and do a little knitting while I go to go meet our first guest. Sound good? Yes. Sounds great. Okay. Thanks. My first guest in the studio today is the founder of Brooklyn Craft Company, my friend, Brett Barra. It is so good to have you in Austin. I'm so excited to see I'm you. I'm so happy to be here in Austin. I have been a big fan of yours, not just a friend for a long time. Not just because you're amazeballs, but also because you hosted a knitting show, you wrote a sewing book, you had a cooking blog, you're kind of a girl of my own sort of like 
craft jewel heart. <laughs> was the natural progression for you to start a store that didn't just cater to one niche that really had a lot of different craft offerings? Yeah, definitely natural for me. I love doing every kind of craft. I just, I just get interested in something new and I want to learn all about it. And I love that. It's very inspiring. So it definitely felt natural to me to start a business that kind of spoke to that. Um, we definitely find with our customer base, we tend to have a lot of kind of young New York girls who um, want to be creative and learn how to do crafts, but don't necessarily know where to start. And we also find that we have a lot of customers who really want kind of that instant gratification. Mm -hmm. So we focus on sort of like beginner level on lots of different things. So it's a lot of fun. Yeah, and I think that people really dig in this like busy day and age to be able to have something preconceived. They go in, they make something, and they walk out with that sense of accomplishment and a cool project all at once. Totally, you leave with a great project, and you know some people decide that they want to learn more, and some people don't, and then that's great either way. But they still have this awesome project. You still have much like this one that we're about to make. Exactly. Our fold-over clutch. So you put together a project. We gave you a challenge. I called you up. I was like, <laughs> I need you to use some different materials. Go. I was like, I can do it. And you did. You did. You put together this bag that uses leather and chunky yarn. Yes. So this bag, um, right, it's part knitted, part leather, and part made by hand and part made on a sewing machine. The knitting part is super simple. It's just stockinette stitch, like the most basic kind of knitting. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a great way to explore what you can do with your knitting besides just making a knitted thing. You can also sew it on a sewing machine and attach it to leather and make a really cool bag. So it's just kind of a want. fun way to like take yeah. it another step further. Yeah, so what I think we should do is a quick refresher for stockinette stitch just in case because you can do this as a beginner mm -hmm. um, or like she was saying, you can experiment if you're more advanced just with the sewing aspect. So we're gonna go over the knit stitch. So yeah, stockinette is just um, knit every stitch on the first row and this is just your classic knit stitch. I don't even know what to say about the knit stitch. I mean, it's knitty. It's knitty. I mean, I, f I love that like, even though this is easy knitting, sometimes it just feels so good to do something really easy, don't you think? It's just I, like, I like it. Netflix I get into a zone. Show. Yeah, get in the zone, just relax. This is also really, really fast knitting because it's on such chunky yarn, which is great. Which I love, which, is, which again speaks to being busy and getting something done. Yeah. All right, so knit every stitch on one row and then purl every stitch on the next row. So now I'm gonna turn and purl. And purling is just the exact opposite of knitting. You're just working on the back of the fabric. Right. And so you would just continue, you get the idea, she's purling. You would do that all, to, all the way to the end and you're gonna repeat that every Just row, keep on going. Every other row until you get a piece that looks a little something like this. Yeah, so you just have a panel like this. It's just a rectangle. We're actually gonna make two of these for the bag and then you need a piece of leather. Okay. So here's okay. our leather. They're cut to the same width. And now what we would do is sew these together to make the full front of the bag. Mm -hmm. So the trick to sewing leather is that you can't use any pins with leather because one, it's like too hard to stick the pin through, yeah. and two, it would leave a permanent hole. So we actually use double-sided tape to seam the leather. And this is actually a real, uh, a real leather construction method. This is not just like some crazy hack oh, I really? dreamed up. Mm -hmm. And just regular like, you well, know, office this supply is tape? regular office supply okay. tape. I mean, there are definitely real leather adhesives out there, but this totally works. And this won't gunk up your machine at it all? It doesn't gunk up the machine. It just doesn't. I, I know. It. I know. So then we're going to actually tape the knitting to the um, leather, just like that. And that's going to keep them in place. So with the right sides together. With the right sides together. You smush exactly. it down. Smush it down. And you can put a couple of binder clips here just to prevent it from shifting when we start okay. sewing. Okay. All right, so why don't we get set up and start sewing? Okay. All right, so we're all set up. I'm gonna hand you your piece. Does any, do people need a special needle or a special foot for their machine to make this? Yes, these? a couple of small adjustments that you need to make to your home machine to sew leather. Um, you need to put on a leather needle, which is the type of needle you can buy. Um, lengthen your stitch length to very long, maybe the longest possible or just under that. And I'm using a walking foot. You could probably get away with maybe a Teflon foot or a roller foot, but I really like a walking foot. Oh, and don't roll the dice when you've done all this work so far. <laughs> right, yeah. yeah, and always do a test first. Like I would definitely recommend knitting a little swatch and cutting a little leather swatch and testing your seam first to make sure that your machine is happy and you like the results that you're getting. 
because there are no do-overs with leather. Once you put a hole in leather, it's there. My tape is coming up a little bit there, but yeah, you could put some binder clips. Yeah, we'll talk would, about binder yeah, clips in a exactly. second to do that. And honestly, can you just trim it? You can fake that later, too, if it slides. Yes, you could trim it. Okay. Okay, so do you need a backstitch or anything? No, not really, because the, it'll be enclosed inside the side seam, so it'll be taken care of later. Okay, so, so what's next? What's so next? next we're gonna do the closure. Okay. <laughs> I'm excited. Can you tell? I'm like, what's You're really excited. Next? We need to attach the closure now before we finish seaming the bag because okay. later it'll be too late. So talking about my love of multi-craftable things, these are macrame supplies, okay. which I use to make this kind of little loopy decorative closure thing. So the first thing we do is cut a strip of leather and just feed it through the um, wooden ring. And then we would attach this to one of either one of the knitted panels, it doesn't matter which, right at the center point, just sort of so that it's hanging um, over the edge a little bit. I would put this down with double-sided tape again. Okay. And then take it to Onto the machine. Onto the yarn? Mm -hmm. It works? Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's not the best. You have to like be careful and not. <laughs> Let's be honest, it may or may not work. But... Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. It's a little tricky, but you can do it. And the yeah. lovely thing about working on knitting is you can see the lines of your stitches, so you know whether or not you've shifted oh, or not. Oh, that is so super you can, handy. Yeah, yeah, you can totally just line it up with one of your columns of stitches. Use some tape. I just attached it with two rows of top stitching, and okay. then trim the leather after. The reason you trim it after is it's too hard to sew it without a, sure, a little sure. bit of. And then you can hold on to it as you're And then working. show. I know it would be on it, but let's go ahead and show how you made the little like. Okay, tassel so then action. we make a little tassel. May I please have my wire and my wire cutters? You may. All right, so the thing about the wire and the wire cutters is it's a really handy dandy way to make a big tassel. So um, I'm gonna make a little like uh, needle threader with a piece of wire. That is a handy tip. Thank you. I macrame like, stuff is hard to find. Is that something they can find at your shop? Yeah, we sell a lot of macrame stuff. We do a lot of macrame, and we have some really cool cord and different types of dowels and beads and whatnot, and that's all on our website. So this is like a little um, handmade needle threader, and you just feed it through the bead, and then you feed your yarn, and I've looped this yarn over like four times, left it pretty long. Feed that through the eye of the needle threader, fold it over, and then you can pull it up through your bead. Voila. Yeah. That's super handy. And then you can just slip this away. Do you have scissors? I do. Thank you. I'll just trim this extra yarn. And then to attach uh, this beady thing to the ring, you would just, actually, Looks better if you do it this way. Yeah, because I do yes. that every time with friends. Every time I have I to work redo so far it. And yes. go on the, I'm glad I'm not the only one. That I'm glad that. I'm not the only one. <laughs> well, we're professionals. This is, I know. <laughs> this is called a lark's head knot and a little more macrame, is it uh, really? little more macrame geekery for you. So you just do a lark's head knot to attach the bead, and then you could just leave it like that because this the the inside of the wooden bead is like a little. Um, Sticky, course, so it yeah. doesn't really fall through, but you could also tie another knot at the base here, and then you just have your little tassel. And tassels are so on trend, it's just like they really a are. cute little embellishment. It's so cute. Honestly, again, this would look cute put on anything. Yeah, you really could just put itself. this on your handbag. Put a tassel strap. on it. Yeah. So, how do we finish this? Bag? Okay, so pretend, pretend, that's pretend, pretend that that's attached. Yeah. Then we've got our two pieces, they're both exactly the same, same size, same shape. We would just um, put them together, right sides together. And at this point, we would just be seaming around all three sides, the sides and the bottom. And it's just like sewing the first step that we did. I would use more double-sided tape here on the leather parts only. And then as a little added security, you can use binder clips. Again, you can't use needles, but um, this is a really nice way to just make sure that things don't shift, especially when you're seaming two pieces together. You don't want it to end up where the other corner gets all oh, yeah, crazy I've done that on so many you. Times. Yeah, that's a very common sewing thing. Because seam so. ripping, it, this is like, that's doubly bad. Like working with knitwear and having yes. the seam rip and also leather. Yes. So just don't binder. make any mistakes. Just binder. And, exactly. And also <laughs> just was... double check to make sure that things are lined up yeah. where you're, these meet, because that's a point where it would be really obvious that they didn't meet up. Sure. Now, of course, with knitting, you can use pins. So you could just get out your T-pins and put in a bunch of pins. Put in a lot because the machine kind of wants to make the two layers shift when they're being sewn. And do sewn. you kind of slow down as you get over this, like... Slow the transfer down, of yes, fibers. But yeah. um, it's actually it's a little bulky. But um, with the walking foot, walking yeah. foot, the purpose of a walking foot is to handle really thick layers. Okay. It's often used in quilting. Sure. So the walking foot will just like barrel over that with no problem. That's why it's really great to have. Okay. So we would just take this to the machine, sew around all three sides, turn it 
right side out, and it's done. Yeah, and it would look like this adorable bag. So cute. You could make it in any color to go with anything that you were wearing. Yeah. I love it, and I love that you're here. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here, and I'm so excited about The Knit Show. Thank you. Thank you. All right, and don't forget, you can go to thenitshow.com for patterns from any episode of the season and complete instructions to make this adorable bag. Up next, we are going to take another field trip. We are headed to Maker's Mercantile. Whenever I travel, I try to check out the local crafty scene. And of course, I look for yarn stores. But the real great gems are when I can find a store that sort of combines a ton of my passions. Usually when we're creative, we like more than one thing, right? So sewing, knitting, crochet, all kinds of great fiber arts. If you can find them in one place, then that is a good trip. So whenever I'm here in the Seattle area, I make sure to stop at a space called Maker's Mercantile. It's owned by my friend Karin Scassell, and it really encompasses all that I love about creativity. So I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna give you a little inside peek of what this great shop is all about. Come on. Most people know you as the CEO of Scassell, which is, of course, Addy Turbos and Haiku Yarn and all this great stuff, but it is the wholesale side of the business. What made you want to sort of step into the public light and create a gorgeous space like this that's open to community? Well, I think that's the key word is community. I wanted to have a place where the community could come in and actually do their craft. As a CEO, I do a lot of administrative work and I actually don't get to be creative or be involved with the people. And in this place here, I actually get to talk to the customers and I, I don't work here all that much, but when I do, I get to sell yarn, I get to sell needles, I get to share my ideas with other people and hear what their ideas are. And that's all part of the community. Well, and I think what a lot of people maybe don't think about is that you're one of the few wholesalers that also owns a retail, but you also know all of the crafts and are passionate about all the crafts, which is not all that common amongst executives. Talk about a little bit, you've sort of like made this a hub for your own passions. Will you walk us through just a little bit of this gorgeous space, like the different sections? Sure. Um, of course we have yarn, and that's because I love to knit and I love to crochet. Mm -hmm. So I would have to say that's my first love. But I also enjoy sewing. So we've got a fabric department, and I try to bring in fabrics from other places that are not so commonly purchased in your quilt shop or in a big box store and so on. I bring in a lot from Europe and, and so on. Um, I enjoy embroidery, so we have a small embroidery department. Felting is a really big passion of mine, so we do have a big felting department. and. What other kinds of yeah, crafts buttons. do we have? Oh, we yeah. have a lot of buttons. I love buttons. So, um, and that's why I bought a button company last year too, is because I love buttons. I've always loved buttons. I have a huge collection at home. So this is just an extension of, of my love for buttons. And then gifts. What, were gifts, are, have novelties and gifts always also been a passion of yours? Because we have the gluten-free bakery here, we also have a lot of people coming in that don't knit and don't crochet. And oh. that's why we brought in gifts, so that there's something for them to look at when they come in, that's too. That's pretty good thinking there, uh, Karen. Well, it works pretty good. And, and I've noticed that you support a lot of local artisans. We do have jewelry. We have um, several indie dyers that are local. We carry their yarns. We have some angoras that are actually raised and spun here in the state, as well as alpacas. Um, and, you know, whenever we can incorporate someone or bring them in for a trunk show or something, we do it. How important was the educational aspect for you? You have all those classrooms in the back. Well, education, I think, is the most important factor. It enables people to learn something new. That encourages them then to purchase something, which then keeps us going. What do you think um, sets your shop apart from, I don't even want to say other craft shops, because your shop's more than that, but what, what, other yarn shops or other basic craft shops or other shops of the sort? Well, I think because we have the space for you to come and work on your craft here, I think that sets us apart. We encourage you to come down and sit all day and spend the day with us and talk to other people who are doing other crafts and so on. I think that is the biggest difference. Well, I love it here. You know, whenever I'm in town, this is, this is on the list to stop. Thank you for having me here. Cheers. Bye. Cheers. Gonna get a moose uh -huh.
<laughs> All right, we're back in the studio. My next guest is author and founder of Smile and Wave, Rachel Denbo. I am so thrilled to have you here in the it studio. It is such a dream come true. Um, you're very sweet. I <laughs> love, 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 like borderline obsessed with your work, with your, with your wall hangings. You as a weaver really sort of naturally work with different textiles and fibers, right? Yes, I love um, com combining and contrasting soft and rough. And um, I've started selling fiber packs and I also have started to offer supplies, looms and tools in my shop um, because I can't get enough of weaving and I want to be able to show other people how easy it is. Um, I think that people also really, or at least I know that I do, appreciate that you've sort of put like color palettes together or mm -hmm. different fibers together mm -hmm. so that people can play with that because I think people need a little permission. Yes, to yes. Um, Think outside the box. Exactly, yes. exactly. So we're going to be um, combining a couple things today. Mm -hmm. Normally you work on a loom. Yes. We're not doing that today. We're going to actually work with crochet. So this would be great if you have swatches at home already and you can turn them into little pieces of hanging art. Mm -hmm. Yes, if you love the look of wall hangings but you don't really want to spend money or learn how to weave, you can just crochet your base and then add a few stitches in to get that same handmade wall hanging woven look. Okay, so we're going to crochet and then you're going to give us a, a couple, of, you're going to give us some insider tips on some weaving techniques. Yes. Okay. All right, so why don't we get started on the crochet portion of the project? So we're going to create our base and you're going to chain stitch as many as you want to have it tall because okay. we're going to flip it sideways. And then you're going to double crochet all the way back. And so you've done, you've completed a row of double crochet So already. I've completed that already. And then we want to chain three more. And this creates your height for that double crochet stitch. Yes. And then flip it over. And then yarn over. And go through here. Yarn over. Go through two loops. And then you continue that all the way across. Okay. And then you want to keep um, crocheting as wide as you would like it. So you've got this part as long and then this part is going to be as wide as you would like it. Let's show them what you mean because you're going to okay. flip it, right? So once that's done, yes, you're going to tie off your knots at both ends on the same side and then you're going to flip it. So this is the top and this is the bottom. And then we are going to use three strands of this really thick chunky wool and we're going to create these, the raya knots that creates this fringe detail on the bottom. So you're going to find the center part and we're going to stick all three through the very bottom. We're going to treat this as the outer warp row and then this part right here in between, wrap it around. So the row that, where the two rows meet, yes, you're actually going to use, yes. there's kind of a, a bar there, you're going to use that. It's going to act as the warp rows as you would use in a weaving project. And you can kind of see the holes that are created. You just want to use where they meet and wrap around both sides. And you would do that all the way across. Okay, and then you get a little something that looks like this. This is what you end up with. And then we're gonna take three more strands of the orange. The orange. I love this It's such a yarn. good pumpkin-y color. Okay, and you're essentially going to do the same thing where you fold it in the middle and you're going to create another row of the same color so that it is nestled in between. And that will really help fill out. Oh, so you're not getting those weird hanging gaps. Yes. Okay. Yes. And then after you've got those two of that color, you add your next color and you start from the outside. And you'll be able to tell where the holes are and kind of fill in the gaps. It's very forgiving. Just so, using that exact same technique. Yes, and that's a raya knot. And those are used in wall hangings for um, a variety of patterns, but this is the most popular one. Okay. So once you've got all three of your rows, Look at it. It's gonna be kind of fluffy and shaggy, and you can trim all of this up later. We're gonna use roving, and this is just my favorite because it's so fluffy. You're going to want to take a, about a four or five foot section and stick one end through a hole on the outside and that is going to kind of hide your end and then you're going to take your Do other end. Do you have to end. weave it in? Nope, you just leave it you on the back side freely. and let it hang. You're it's so counterintuitive for me. right? It makes me nervous. So you're going to wrap around that outside little warp row and stick it through 
this hole. And you want to keep it kind of fluffy so that it hides all of those warps. And then we're going to be stitching this direction all the way. So you want to kind of count out two holes, stick it to the back side. And this is where you really kind of have to wrestle with your project. This roving can get really tricky. Leave it kind of fluffy. If ro sometimes roving breaks, if it breaks, do you need to pull it out and start again, or is there some kind of you magic can, you can, spell you can As do? long as you have about two or three inches, you can just leave it on the back side and it won't be showing. Um, and then the, this part will just hold it all in. Oh, it's I not see what you're saying. Out. So you can join it in the center. Yes, okay. yes. And so then you're going to want to go a little bit over, find a hole, maybe one back in the, in the row up. And then go this direction. So it kind of creates this slanted pattern. And once you get one whole row of this, again, you're going to have to wrestle with that roving. Pull it out and you'll be able to see just how fluffy it gets once it goes all the way across. And I think we have a sample of that next. Okay. So this is a sample of that diagonal pattern that you get, and this will be hidden. When you get all the way to the other side, you're going to loop around that outer row and come back in and then loop around a second time. And leave that nice and fluffy. And then you will continue in the same overhand pattern all the way back. Okay, and so you, you just keep going with that. Mm -hmm. Why don't you go ahead and finish that off and then we'll go to the next step. Okay, so now you've come to the end, and how do you finish this part off? Okay, so if you have little bits like this, you just want to cover up this space so you can tuck them under. I'm going to leave that there and use this part to wrap around kind of in reverse so that it hides that edge and then everything ends up tucked on the back. Okay. So that part is done, and this is called sumac. Very cute, I love the braided look. Okay, so the last sort of touch is you're going to be actually weaving. Yes. Okay. Great <laughs> actually color. Actually starting the weaving portion. <laughs> now we will be weaving. <laughs> so I mean, I guess this is all technically weaving. Technically, but, yes. But what people traditionally have thought of as weaving. Yes, yeah. and so you can take a single strand of yarn or you can double it up. I'm gonna double this one up. And you recommend using a bulky at this point? Bulky is really great if you have a lot of holes because it will fill up space and add all that texture. If you are using um, a fingering lace, it's not gonna show up as much. Um, so I do like using bulky. So start on the back side, and again, you're just finding your holes. And again, that can just rest on the back. And you're just going to go through every other hole. So you don't need a needle or anything. You just, you just use, use your, your fingers. This would friendly. actually really be a great introduction to weaving for kids it, too. It if you're looking for, you know, projects over holiday vacation or spring break or whatever, this is a great um, way to get kids excited about working with different materials. And even if you just created the um, crocheted portion and helped them just weave through it, that's really good for that um, fine motor skills development. Okay, so you would just continue to weave all the way through. You can go a couple at a time. And you can kind of just decide how long you want those strands to be. Yeah. And you would continue that until, you could really, I mean, you do you, right? Yeah. You could do a couple rows or you could fold it up as color. you did. And then let's just briefly kind of talk about how you'd finish it off. If you want to, of course, you want to hang it. <laughs> if you want to, when you add a hanger, is there okay. any? Do you have any tips? Do you have so any? you can stitch your dowel on, or you could even just stitch it through all of those holes, and then you just add a cotton hanger, and it's ready to go. It's ready to go. Really cute, great gift. Mm -hmm. You can you can also use copper piping yes. and you know branches from outside and bring mm -hmm. a little nature side. That there's it's endless and it's so creative and. I adore it. I adore Thank it. You. Thank, Thank you. you so much for being here. Yes, it's my pleasure. Up next, we're gonna play a little more with crochet where I show you all different kinds of materials that you can add to a bangle that you wear. A really fun way to experiment with different materials and mixing and matching is by making tiny pieces of wearables. So 
Today, we're gonna to be focused on bangles. I love vintage bangles. I found a bunch of these at just my local thrift store, and I thought that it would be super fun just to add a little crochet detailing. What's fun about this is not only are you mixing like a jewelry piece and with some kind of textile, but you can also experiment easily without having to commit to a large project. So you could use plain old, well not plain, but beautifully dyed yarn, or even strips of fabric or fra fabric yarn, maybe some linen, a suede is really fun, metallics. I've even spun some newspaper before and done it or created yarn out of plastic bags. Really anything that can be made into string can be knit or crocheted with, so have fun and play. So what I thought I would do is I would show you how to add something, any of these things, I have this velveteen ribbon here, to a bracelet. So this one, I decided that I would just do a little arch because I really wanted to see that pop of color. I might wanna see less color here, so I'm going to choose a wider one, and I'm gonna use this velveteen ribbon, really skinny, and you can get it you know, online at any trim store or at your local craft store. You're gonna make a slip knot, choose a crochet hook, then you're going to take your crochet hook and sort of dive through the center of the bangle. You'll place the slip knot on your hook and pull it through. And this is set up, and you'll see that you're set up because it's attached-ish, right? Okay, so then what we're gonna do is we are going to yarn over and pull it through. And now it's attached, and we're just gonna continue doing that. So dive under, yarn over. You'll now have two loops on your hook. You'll pull it through both. Yarn over. pull through both. And you'll continue that. You can really do, you can do it all the way around. You can do it, you know, just a little pop of color here. You could have it draped down and be fringe. Really just have, have fun with it. I decided for this one that I would go all the way around. I liked the orange and the magenta together, or the fuchsia, just having a little tiny, tiny pop. So it's fun, it's easy, it adds a little bit of uniqueness to any bangle or item. So have fun and just play a little. All right, that does it for us today. Thank you so much for hanging out and playing with different textiles. Remember, everything that you need to know, downloadables and scoop and links, info on our experts, you can find on thenitshow.com. I also wanna just say thank you for watching and also a huge shout out to my Knit Hive this time. Be sure to tune into our next episode where we focus on vintage style. We will have Lorna's Laces, Amanda Jarvis. We'll also have crochet author Edie Ekman. I can't wait to see you again, but until then, breathe in, knit out. Mm -hmm.